Well, good morning and welcome to our Real Life Interviews. Uh, this morning I'm with uh, Ian Henley, uh, Ian, part of our church, Ian and Jan, served the Lord with us for a while, been involved in so many things. Uh, but this morning we're going to have a little bit of a different chat. Uh, the certain issues in church sometimes can, can be a little bit taboo, especially around mental health. Uh, which obviously is a big subject, especially during lockdown, people getting very uh, insular, maybe agoraphobic, depressed, uh, worried, concerned. And um, I know, Ian, you've got a big heart for all of that. So you, you're just about to you're just about to finish a book that you're writing. Uh, where, where, where did all that start? Uh, well, actually, uh, it's taken me quite a, a while to write the book because the, the nature of the issue that I had was the fact that Oh, for quite a few months, I didn't really know what had happened to me and um, let alone why it had happened and all those kind of things. And um, it, was, it was 10 years ago, actually, in, in looking back and, and looking at my diaries and notes, etc. Um, very heavily involved in so many different things. And uh, in fact, one of the chapters is called Hats because, you know, we have this... this uh, saying that you know i'm wearing so and so hat today mm -hmm. i'm a i'm an elder of the church uh, treasurer but i'm also a, a son looking after parents in their mid 80s i'm a father got two boys grandchildren and of course a husband then i've got quite a few uh, i was made redundant uh, about 20 years ago and like a lot of people i was kind of pushed i suppose or allowed myself to take up that opportunity of becoming self-employed so i started a, a web design business and, and that kind of thing and as part of that i got involved in a, a stove and cooker company writing websites working in the showroom i did some paid work at church as well so i had unteen revenue streams um but but the problem was where i worked from home and i have done for the last 20 years when i worked from home I didn't know which hat I was wearing, who I actually was, until when the phone went, the person at the other end of the phone started to speak. Um, so they may say anything from, um, oh, there's a problem with one of the church folks, Can we, we need to get together and talk to them, pray with them, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or it could be we'd shipped the stove out and it hadn't arrived and they'd waited in all day. Or it could be someone's email wasn't working so i could be any of those things and uh, i could only answer the phone hi can i help you because i didn't know whether to say middle web services i didn't know whether to say in henley i didn't know whether to say um you know stovesandfires.com and um it was that very much living on the edge that uh, i think caused the problem I mean, it's only really been through writing the book that I've kind of worked out what happened and how I got there. And uh, it, it's uh, what I found was that, you know, if you've got a, a physical problem as a Christian in church, uh, for instance, diabetes, then you can take medication, get treatment and still be prayed for at church. And no one would kind of really bat an eyelid at you taking the medication. So if I'm diabetic, um, I probably need to take insulin on a, on a daily basis. So if I ask for prayer for this diabetes to be healed and absolutely believe in healing, because I've, I've seen people healed when I've prayed for them either immediately or over the days and weeks after that prayer. So I've seen all of that. But if I go out for prayer for diabetes, no one really these days would say, yeah, we'll pray for you, but stop taking the medication. You don't need it. Um, but what I found was, and, and I've heard a few people say this, that if it's to do with depression or stress or anxiety, which was, which was my issue, then you, you don't need antidepressants. You, you need more faith or, or we'll pray for you and you don't need, you know, you've been a Christian for how long Then you need antidepressants. And I remember going to see my GP and when he first said, I'm going to prescribe antidepressants, I was horrified because of my church upbringing, you know, I'd actually um, 
prayed for people with depression and anxiety and at the back of my mind i'm thinking you know you need to trust god more and so i was guilty of that as well and when my gp you know prescribed anti depression in fact if he hadn't been a christian gp i probably wouldn't have agreed to it but i went with it and i'm, and I'm glad i did um so there's this this kind of odd thing that happens in that um when it's stress, anxiety, depression, uh, in, in some, if not a lot of Christians, um, and, and maybe church leaderships as well, there's, there's this odd thing happen that, yeah, we'll pray for you, but you, know, you, you don't need to be taking antidepressants. And it was this sense of failure as, as a guy who you know, had faith, had seen God heal people now, I was on antidepressants, so there's there's all this negative stuff around that, and 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 it was difficult to to. I mean, the, the fact that I was put on antidepressants kind of made it worse for a bit. Um, and then there's all this thing about burnout and and um, breakdown. Uh, I mean, I probably couldn't label what had happened to me for several weeks i just my brain stopped working that, that's what happened uh november 2010 uh, i came home from half a day paid work at church and, and there i was trying to take everything off the senior pastor that senior pastor shouldn't be involved in like employment contracts finances um government reports charity reports all those kind of things and um so again a lot of hats but i came home on this thursday got home lunchtime did the usual thing went to the answering machine to get off all my messages and there were probably 10 or 12 messages that day and normally being a very logical sort of guy even as i wrote down the messages i, I could prioritize them in my head um, and messages i want to place an order for a stove top priority being a salesman people want to place an order things like my stove's not arrived where is it or it's arrived damaged my website's down what's going on and um so i wrote these 12 messages down but then i just stared at this piece of paper this list mm -hmm. and i couldn't work out what to do next my my brain froze um I mean, reading up on it, we're not supposed to say that um, you know, my brain stopped working. That's what it felt like. And being a, a pretty logical guy, that was a very scary, dark place. And uh, I just went off to bed and I, I curled up in bed in the fetal position, actually. Um, and I was there for two or three days. It, it, it was so scary that I couldn't, I couldn't talk to my wife. I couldn't hold a conversation. And uh, it, it probably took me about three months before I could think about putting a label on it because it kind of helps to put labels on things. But maybe it was burnout. I'd, I'd pushed myself too much with all these different hats and roles and responsibilities. In fact, my GP said, um, what's happened, Ian? Your brain has kind of said, I've had enough of this, Ian. I'm out of here. You're on your own for a bit. Um, and burnout has kind of positive connotations when you talk to people. Oh, he's such a great guy. You could ask him to do anything and do it. Um, very willing to help. So there's kind of positive things around that. But if you start to label something, or if I thought about labeling it as um, breakdown, it has negative connotation. He couldn't cope. Or, you know, didn't trust God enough or, you know, all that kind of thing. So after about two or three months, I started referring to it as in, in my mind as burnout. But then eventually I came to the realization and actually my CB consultant, CBT consultant, um, confirmed it was a breakdown. And so now I can call it a breakdown. Um, and, and that helps to be able to do that. But it was a dark time. Yeah. Very dark. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think people have got this stigma about mental health. Um, 
Thank God, in our generation, it's talked about more than it perhaps has been in other times. Um, but there's still that stigma, especially around the church, I guess, with uh, again the whole faith thing being bantered around. Um, what do you think about with obviously with the lockdown and stuff? Um, people have had a lot of time off. Um, do, for some people, that's going to be really helped, isn't it? But for other people, that's also going to be the challenge. I know for me, it's to have the extra time as we talked just before we came on air. Um, it's been a, a godsend, really, just to reprioritise my days and to actually to slow down a little bit. I was, I was on a bit of a treadmill that I couldn't get off, um, but been able to slow it down and, and, and get the pace right. Yeah, um, I think for Jan himself being retired, it's it's kind of not that much different, to be fair. But um, part of reliving. Uh, what happened to me in writing the book and some some sections I, w- I was writing was very difficult because it kind of reminded me of, of how dark it was, how difficult it was. Uh, but what it made me do is think, well, how, how did I get here? What? And I think um, w- when I was working for myself, when I was uh, sales management in IT, I mean, I lived... I live life at 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And there are so many people out there that life is like that now. Um, I mean, I've heard it referred to, and I agree, it's like a modern day slavery. And I think you know yourself being in sales, you get your target for the year, you go over your target 10%, and oh, that's great. Now your target's that 110% plus another 10 or 20%. And so it, it goes on and on and on. So I think for, a lot of people, I mean, if I was in that kind of work now and I had to work at home for three, four months, I mean, I, I, I dread to think what I'd be like because I would be itching to be out there, itching to get involved. So I suspect a lot of people have found it very, very difficult. Um, and I think being in sales, you know, you're, you're typically self-motivated, otherwise you probably shouldn't be in sales. Mm then being self-motivated, you, you can't be sitting around, even working from home on a laptop, you want to be out there meeting people, seeing people, seeing buyers, IT managers, whatever it is. Um, but I think, I think what caused my, my breakdown was a fundamental problem uh, that I've, I've, I'm, I'm coming to terms with and, and trying to desperately never to be in, in that situation again. And my issue was this, I think, by keep saying yes mm-hmm. to things, so many things, I took on far too much, uh, that as I said, I didn't know who I was half the time um, until the phone went in this, this last 20 years of working from home. And I think I was just trying to please people too much mm-hmm. instead of, uh, when I was asked to do something or had an opportunity to do something, I didn't. I didn't talk to Jesus about it. You know, what do you think about this? Mm. And uh, I think that was my main problem in in why I get there. So now, and what I'm trying to say in the book is is be what God wants us to be, mm. and and not and not what people want us to be or think we should be. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are certain fundamentals in marriage, for instance, you have responsibility to your wife and stuff like that. Um, and I actually think this is because I got to the, the situation I did, the difficulty I had. Um, I think there are a lot of Christians in the ministry. And over the years, I've seen a lot of marriages fall apart because it's not so bad these days. But when I was growing up and, and I suppose, growing as a Christian, the thought was that it's Jesus first, the church second, and you, and you, and you spouse and family third, which in my view is totally incorrect Mm. because I'm not married to the church. Mm. I'm not one flesh with the church. I'm married to my wife and we are one flesh. So therefore my view is that it's Jesus first, my wife uh, second, and then, the church now mm-hmm. some people won't agree with that mm. but but i think if we're one flesh then we can we, we can in a way kind of we can't do anything separately because we're one flesh so uh when i'm in leadership at church my wife isn't 
part of the leadership, but she's part of me in that leadership. And I think it was um, very much trying to please other people mm -hmm. rather than to listening to what God was saying to me. And I think yeah. that's that's a fundamental difference. And and therefore, I was always being in sales. You know, you're only as good as your last month's figures. Yeah. If you hit your target last month, you're brilliant. If you fail this month, you're hopeless. And it's very much this seesaw view of yourself if you're not careful. Because I think that I and a lot of people um, see who they are in what they do as a job, what they do as a career. Um, and that's that's not scriptural. And um, And I think that's one of those kind of thoughts that we have that needs to be pulled into subjection to how mm. God sees us. We're sons of the living God, and that's yeah. who we are. I, I, I'm not, when I was working, it's not that I was a salesman, that was not my identity. My identity was in Christ. Yeah. The fact that I did a sales job is very much down the list of priorities. And that's where I got it fundamentally wrong. Mm. And I, I, see, I see a lot of people um who are in that similar situation and uh, you know of people i've spoken to and said you know you need to be careful because where you are now i was in 2010 mm -hmm. yeah. when i just fell apart mm -hmm. so the, the 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 reason for writing the book is um i mean it has been great for me to write the book because it's helped me an all an awful lot and I, i've i've got some tools in there which I'm using now to stop me getting to where I was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's for Christians who find themselves who are stressed, anxious, and therefore depressed, um, that it's okay to be not okay sometimes. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, I think that's quite important. But also for church leaderships to get a better understanding of what's mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. with someone who is stressed. And anxious and depressed um, and not to kind of just ride rough shot, shot over that um, and be in a better position to understand and therefore to help and support people who are in that place mm -hmm. yeah there's so much more we could talk about this morning and I'm just conscious of time because we've been okay we've been rattling there for about what, 25 minutes or so um, I'd like to come back and do a second session with you, if that's possible, just in, in the next few weeks. I think yes, okay. we, we, we can definitely do a session on burnout. I think it's important that you know we understand you cannot keep giving out without taking in, and it's that's a whole spiritual principle. You know that you, we need to um, allow God to minister to us before we can minister to anybody else. I mean, Jesus yeah. is uh, our example of that, taking time out with the Father before He ever lays hands on any sick people. Yeah. So yeah. I think perhaps we can have a, a session around that. I think that would be useful. But before we go, would you just uh, pray for those who've been watching uh, today, sure. uh, wherever they might pick this video up? It could be um, it could be in this time of lockdown. It could be in a couple of years' time. But we know these these things have a, a way of being putting the right people's hands at the right time. So we believe in God wherever you are. That if you yeah. just need to to have a fresh encounter with God and to Go and see the doctor. We, we go and see Absolutely. the doctor. Sit down with the doctor and have a chat, and uh, find some godly friends that can support you and pray for you at the same time. It's not an either-or situation. So, yeah. would would you just would you just pray for us as we go? Yeah, again? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Father, I just want to thank you that uh, we're your children. But as I pray that, I just ask Father that we might just grab a hold of that in all its in all its fullness, so that we realize that we're not what we do. Um, we are who you say we are. Mm -hmm. You're our father. That's who you are. And we're your children. That's who we are. We are loved by you. That's what we are. And Father, I just thank you that um, you, 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 you're creating conversations so much now about stress and anxiety and depression. Uh, out there in the world i just pray father that we'll be able to talk about these things and and not feel guilty not feel ashamed not feel a failure um by the fact that we have some of these issues but lord i pray that you'll bring a revelation 
of who we are in you. You chose us. You saw something in us that that uh, that we probably can't see and couldn't see. But we pray that you reveal those things to us. And pray, Father, for everyone out there who's maybe stressed, especially at this time, anxious about so many things, and, and causing these are causing to uh, having the effect of pulling us down and uh, and away and misdirected from from how you see us. We pray the Holy Spirit will just reveal more of the your, the Father's heart to us today, so that we'll realise fully who we are in Jesus. Thank you, and Amen. 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 Thank you, Ian, for uh, sharing your heart. Uh, you used a, a word there while you were praying about being ashamed, and let me just say to everybody listening today: do not be ashamed. That's something that the devil wants to make you. Yep. Sh- put shame upon you there's nothing shameful about needing help if you broke your leg you go and get a plaster on it yep. you know if you've got problems and you turn to burnout and depression then go seek some help as i say get some godly counsel at the same time but let yep. jesus minister to you and uh, get yourself uh, back on an even kill because we need all the army of god doing what they're supposed to do in these last days and uh, we want to be part of a fantastic yep. revival and um so god bless you Ian. thank you so much bless you. i'm going to speak to you soon take care okay Bless you. See you soon. Thanks, Steve. Bless you.